We want to look at drawing graphs now that involve uh, having the graph and then finding the graph to the power of a number. So that's what we'll do. And the other one we want to do this week for next for this week, we want to look at the function where we have the square root, but we'll put that in another video. So, but they're the two we want to look at and concentrate on this week. So firstly, what we want to do is have a look at the idea of Let's consider y is equal to x, x squared, x cubed, x to the power of 4. What do we notice it's common to start off with? Well, they both all go through the origin. They all go through 1. Now, when it's great, when the, when we get x being greater than 1, and the function of x gets greater than 1 in that case, then all the curves start to rise quickly. And they some are going, the ones with the higher powers are going to have the larger values because that's x, x squared, x cubed, x to the power of 4. Because they're going to rise quicker because they're going to be to the higher powers. But when we're between 0 and 1, this is really where we want to concentrate on it because it's going to work in the opposite. Because we're going to have fractions here, two powers, when we take a fraction and a fraction, we get smaller values. So notice that we've got x then x squared, x cubed, x to the power of 4, closer to the x-axis. They start to rise pretty quickly. They're all becoming involved at 1. Um, but we've, the larger the power, the closer it's going to go out here and then start to suddenly turn up. And you can do that. If you go into a graphing program, that'll show you um, exactly what that's going to look like. So, and you've seen that sort of thing before. But that, that's what we want to really concentrate with these types of graphs. So where the y values of 1 are important, so what do we need to look for? Well, there's a few things here. So when we get the derivative of this, we apply the chain rule, and this would be the derivative of the function of x to the power of n. So bring the power down, subtract 1 from the power, multiply by the derivative. Now, notice here from this situation, if the derivative is there and we set it equal to 0, we get stationary points at the intercepts of the function of x now. And also, what was a stationary point before will be stationary points again because with the derivative there as well. So stationary points and intercepts are stationary points of that function. Also, if the function is greater than 1, so it doesn't matter whether it's greater than 1 or less than minus 1, when we take the absolute value of it, it will be greater than the absolute value of the function x. Basically, that's the idea that when it's greater than 1, the function's greater than the function, than, than the, fun the function to the power is greater than the function itself. And notice that this is function of x and this would be the function of x all squared and the function of x all cubed and, and so it doesn't really matter what power we start with this one the function here is greater and the second rule says well if it's let between 0 and 1 then it's going to be it's going to be smaller than that and that's what that second rule is saying there if it's the functions of if the value of the function is a fraction then the power of the fraction is less than the function itself and where it's 1 then the function to the power gives you one as well. If it ends even, then the whole function is going to be positive. So it's always going to be great above the x-axis because even to an even power is going to be positive. But if it's odd, then if it was positive, then it stays positive. If the function was negative, then it's the, the function to a power will stay negative. So let's, we can keep our signs correct in that case. So let's have a look at some questions in this. So given y is equal to 1 minus x squared, which is just a parabola, there's the blue line, color, a blue graph there. The function, the, sketch the graph of 1 minus x squared, all squared. Well, we know from what we just saw, because it's all squared, even power, it's always going to be positive. Now, the key here with drawing these ones is to look at the idea, well, where is it going to be greater than equal to 1? So we know where, because it's an even power, everything's going to be positive. So... The key is to look at where it was 1 as well, because where it was 1 there, it will now be negative 1 there, it will be now positive 1, because it's squared, and negative 1 all squared is squared. So we can match up those values there and, and get that idea. But also you can see that all the values here, where it was less than 1, are going to be less than the power. But over here now, you can start to see when it's greater than 1, it's going to be above what these ones are, it's going to rise a bit quicker than it was here. But you can see, this is why we graph the two together, because we can see that our graph has to be on the inside. We also see, go back to our rule that well, where they were intercepts, they are now turning points. So turning point stays the turning point, but intercepts now become turning points as well. 
So if we look at the next one, x squared minus 1, well, there gets our blue graph again. And we're looking, because it's Q, we're going to look at minus at 1 and minus 1. Don't be afraid to draw lines there, just to show, well, that's where they're going to intersect. They're important. So the, the lines Y is equal to 1, but also show that the idea that where our curve for X, for the original function, and then we went to the power, it's going to be larger when it's great when the function of x is greater than 1 but it's also smaller than the function notice it's on the inside it, well, it's, it's on the outside of the curve there in this regard and on, on the inside here because the values are smaller they're closer to the x-axis um, they should be closer to the x-axis they now become turning points well even though they were even though it's still going there they're technically not turning points stationary points as I should say so stationary points stay at a stationary point, but these ones become horizontal points of inflection for there. So we're following those rules and being able to get those. But the, the key one is where it goes through 1 and minus 1 and the values in between. So cos of x is our blue curve here. And because cos x is only going to be between minus 1 and 1, it's cubed. So we know those values are going to be the same. So... We're looking there, that well, they're going to stay turning points. It's going to be minus 1, it's going to be positive 1, and when it's cubed, it's going to stay the same value. It's going to be stay, where it was positive, it stays positive. Where it was negative, it stays negative. Where it went through the axis, well, it still goes through the axis, but now they're going to become stationary points because it still stays positive, it still stays as negative and positive. But all the fun, all, we need these two drawn at the same time because the function's going to be inside it. And close to the x-axis every time for these fu for this function because it's going to be taking fractions of fraction fractions cubed, so it's going to stay the same. Four sine x, have a look there. So four sine x all squared. Well, because it's four sine x, then it's going to start to get a little bit larger. So again, I've got one drawn up there. Let's try and draw it. Like, this is where my I've got to be able to try and get some. I've got to deal with scale. You can get away with the scale. A little bit better than what I can with a drawing program in such. Mine's a bit neater, but you can get away with not having to draw it such that the scale's got to be exact there. But it's important to have this the idea where it's y is equal to 1. Notice it's squared now that it's going to be all above the x axis. Where it goes to the axis there are turning points. Turning points here remain turning points there. And notice where we have the curve in terms of uh, in, in less that the functions of y are let them the values of y are less than one that's going to be inside the curve it's a little bit hard to see there but i think you can see there's a bit of daylight there. there's a bit of gap there between those so one minus x and one minus x all cubed again because it's cubed what was positive remains positive what was negative remains negative we draw it we have a look at where our curve is at one and minus one and Turning points remain, but now in intercepts now become stationary points. And our curve is on the inside, it's close to the x-axis there, but rising much more quickly than our fu original function when it's when the values were well, less than minus 1 in this case. So we looked at the absolute values. And x squared minus 1 to the power, all squared, well you can see there's x squared minus 1. Our turning points, we, we, important to look at where it's 1. And so the squared, they all become positive. The negative values become positive there. And again, where we're looking at, at 1. So you can see where the curves intersect at 1 because they're the same. And they're closer to the x-axis where it's less than 1 and start to rise more quickly with that one. So cos x and cos x squared, again, go through your rules. They're going to be positive all the way through turning points remain stationary point uh, intercepts become stationary points and again I've got at one there and you can see the curve on the inside the with that okay yeah. using this graph here 3x minus x cubed on 4 all cubed and you can again this again the scales a little bit hard again you can see where your turning points are going to be it's a little bit harder because you've got to get those turning points from that one and so you drive it and oh, sorry station come become turning points after I work out that they are intercepts and then you can see the turning points there as well 
So again, if we go through those rules, we follow the, those rules all the time. And if we can do that, we will get the, our curve uh, looking correct. Again, the scale's a little bit hard here to play with, because you can see that's going at one there, because I'm sorry, at four there. So my scale's really going to struggle with this one, because it's four sine x and four sine x all cubed. There's a really hard one to draw in that respect. That's where you can get away with not having to worry about scale too much. You could still show one on your graph. You're not picking up there that it's the curve's going to be less than, or closer to the x-axis than the function. So the 4x, 4 sine x all cubed is going to be closer to the x-axis than 4 sine x between zero, when y value is between 0 and 1. It's really hard to pick that up. So your drawing can be a little bit better in that regard. So keep those, again, We've got some rules to follow and checkpoints to go through as you go through the cur as you go through the function, and, and and try and draw this function. So try and follow those rules as you go through every time.